Just before the break, we heard about the unbelievable number of pets that are currently available for adoption at the Humane Society of Southern Arizona. That is just entirely too many. So we want to help get one of those dogs a home right now here on the show. Diana and Andrea have brought us a furry friend ready to go to a good home. Who do we have here today? This is Gina. Gina can't decide if she wants to get up on the couch. <laughs> oh, or, she wants kisses. <laughs> or meet all the people. Um, Gina is a four year old lab mix, and she's actually been in our shelter. Um, she's our second longest term resident. Remember Kabaya from yesterday? Yep. She's our first. Gina's our second. Um, she is such a good girl. She's potty trained. Gina gets along well with other dogs. She loves people. I haven't heard her make a peep. Nope. She is just pretty curious. Um, so what she needs is a home that's going to keep her entertained. Maybe some of those fun doggy brain games. Um, maybe whenever the weather cools down, a fun hike or a jog, things like that. Gina is is a very loyal pet. She's only been with me for a couple hours today, and she's already like, "Girl, wait, our best friend." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> yes, you're yeah. gonna go out and get a pedicure. After I, this. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> you guys are gonna go back to go grab some lunch. <laughs> Andrea, I always wondered, you know, you, you spend so much time there, you know, with the animals and seeing them come and go. Mm -hmm. Do you have maybe an idea as to why you think some animals go quickly and why maybe some animals like Gina and Caballo yesterday are there longer? You know, um, I like to say that a pet in a shelter is the least adoptable when they're in their kennel, which is horrible, right? Because that's the most the biggest chance that they get is when they're in their kennel, people stop by and people, uh, people meet the pets that way. So um, it's frustrating because there are dogs that are wonderful, like Gina, who are so well behaved, but when they're in their kennel, people pass over them day after day after day. So we do whatever it takes to, to get the dogs out, to socialize them, to make sure that people, people know that this dog is a great dog. Um, so we, we do a lot of work on our social media, on our Facebook page, to, to show uh, some great videos and portraits of our pets. Um, we also, through our FAST program, we'll have the pets go out to certain events. We'll do off-site adoptions, um, things like that, just to try to show the dog when they're not in their kennel. Gina in her kennel, she's a black dog. She lays on the black bed with her blanket. She gets looked over, you know, and, and um, unless she's playing in there or unless it's a puppy up against the kennel, yeah. a lot of people walk over them, and, and, um, and it breaks our hearts because she's a great dog and she deserves a home. Yeah, from the moment you brought her in today, she's very calm. Yes. She's very curious. She came up to both you and yeah. I when we were back in, in the room. It was fantastic. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about what we did yesterday. The organization has three pillars. Yes. Uh, let's go over what those are again, and which one are we focusing on today? Well, our three pillars are shelter and placement, um, community outreach, and prevention. And today we're going to talk about our education program. So education is so important in our community. And one of the places, that, one of the areas that we feel that we have the greatest impact is starting with our youth. And so we have a very robust program that we co collaborate with schools to help children learn how to be good pet owners. Yeah. And that then translates into you know, as they grow up and as they become a pet owner and they see their friends with pet owners, it's, the education <laughs> is huge. So, but it's also about um, them being observant um, in the community about other education, you know, if they witness something that, and we're going to talk about that today too, but if they witness something where they think a pet is maybe not being handled properly. So there's a lot of education that's involved. Um, and it's all because we want to have this caring community for animals. Well, let's connect those two dots. How do these dollars that people are donating today really connect over to that education? Well, we right now, we're in 200 classrooms. We're coming into this school season. We're going to be in 200 classrooms. And the education program is, is unfunded. So the donations that we make today helps us prepare materials, helps us take care of the animals that we take in because we take pocket pets, snakes, rabbits, you know, bunnies, and mice and rodents. <laughs> um, so it helps us care for that. So it's a lot of, of material, it's supplies that we couldn't do without having these dollars that come in through programs like today. Yeah, this is definitely really informative for people because I honestly had no idea that you took in all those animals. When I thought of it, I thought cats and dogs. Yeah. Maybe I'm a little naive for believing that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important for people to know, oh, it is everything. Oh, the, my son wants a bunny. 
Exactly. Why don't we go check out the bunnies that they have there? Right. Yeah, this is exactly what Pledge I Pledge for Pets is really about. We want people to understand where those dollars are going. We want them to make those donations. We want to remember the kids are benefiting. We have all these great events we put on, you know, all throughout the year, and then uh, dogs that are just like Gina. So we're gonna again remind everybody how to do the that donating, the part that we really, really are, yeah. are so edging at today. Now there's been an amazing amount of donations already, but more donations means more animals being saved. If you have a moment and even a few spare dollars. You can join the Humane Society in the fight against everything like animal cruelty and help provide great services for the community. All you have to do, very simple, yeah. everyone's on their phone nowadays anyway, pick up your phone, call 881-7401 or get online, get on that computer, log off Facebook and go to hssaz.org.